And Chris Bryant, who resigned from the Shadow Cabinet last week, joins me now. Welcome back to the Good program. Morning, Will there be a challenger to Mr. Corbyn now for the leadership? Well, I think there's a previous question. I, I'm sorry to tell okay, you that there's well, a previous right. question, but I, it, it seems to me that actually there are millions of people out there in the country who would really like to be able to vote for the Labour Party. But whilst we have this unsustainable position, it, they feel it's impossible. And the unsustainability of it is, is frankly that we are a parliamentary democracy. So the first job of the leader of the Labour Party is to lead the parliamentary Labour Party and to provide an opposition. That requires 95 MPs on the front bench. And Jeremy can't get more than 20 or 25. And I think that that simply means that the present situation is unsustainable. The only person who can break that logjam is Jeremy himself. Mm. But the logjam in some way would be broken or at least tested if someone challenged him. So let me come to what is now the second question of, the, of, of your interview. Will somebody challenge him? Should someone challenge him? Well, I don't want to, anybody to challenge him yet. I want Jeremy to read the writing on the wall because what's happened over the last year, we've now had an opinion poll which show, of Labour Party members which shows that 44% of them want him to go now and another 10% want him to go before the general election. We've had votes of no confidence, not only in the parliamentary party, that's more than 80% of MPs saying uh, uh, this has never happened before. 80% of MPs saying that they have no confidence in, in, uh, in his leadership. And that means he wouldn't be able to get on the ballot paper. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why the rule book says you've got to get a certain number of nominations from the parliamentary party, because if you haven't even got that much support, how can you really lead the Labour Party? Even if you're the incumbent, wouldn't, wouldn't, even if you're wouldn't the incumbent. People, people just watching this programme who may nothing to do with the Labour Party may not be that political, would just think that if you're the leader of the party and you're challenged for that leadership, natural justice says you should be allowed to defend your position. But if you then simply return to the status quo ante mm. because you end up with exactly the same unsustainable position, then I don't think that resolves anything well, for the Labour Party. That would be your democratic country. decision. Well, except that, I think because we are a parliamentary democracy, the leader of the Labour Party has to be able to unite the parliamentary party and the membership and frankly be able to recruit voters to our cause and I don't think Jeremy's able to do any of those three things but but what's interesting I think is amongst the membership I don't think Jeremy w would, would win a contest if, if I'm honest now. You don't? I, on, I don't because it, it, it was striking to me mm. um, how many people have got in touch with me from my own local party saying mm. of course there are people who are ardent Corbynistas and they will be till their dying day but there are others who've got in touch to say I only joined the Labour Party to support Jeremy but I'm sorry this just can't go on. Jeremy he's not convincing me he's not convincing my neighbors um, right. and they want him to go but of course th you may be right but there's only one way you can put that to the test there's only and one that way is someone to challenge mr corbyn and let's see how the dominoes fall no because i think that just gets us immediately back to the same position oh, and, 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 I think it will, and i think it will be phenomenally bruising within the labor party mm. to have that contest mm. I, I think far more um, effective would be for Jeremy to read the writing on the wall, which is, I mean, it must be eight metres high now. I mean, how can you possibly go forward with the situation as leader of the Labour Party when seven of your new members of your shadow cabinet that you've only appointed this week, who are Corbyn supporters, want to come and see you, and you're so frightened that you can't even meet with them? I or understand with the deputy that. leader of the Labour Party. I, and, 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 and indeed, I, I see the logic of that. But how long will you give them? To read this writing on the wall well the look it's up to in the end it's up to jeremy jeremy is i think a very decent man i can't imagine any other leader of the labor party in our history apart from perhaps ramsay mcdonald who would not have taken on board the result of a motion of no confidence but he but seems to be surrounded by people who are telling him not to and that he is hitting these people i mean we've had stories that he was thinking of standing down but mm -hmm. he was talked out of we don't know the full veracity of, of all that but if he doesn't if he decides no i'm hanging on here what do you do to be honest once you're in the bunker and you've got a bunker mentality, the game's up, is, is all I'd say. And, and I'm sure that in Jeremy's heart, he knows that there is a real danger that his broken leadership, because that is frankly what it is now, will break the Labour Party. But listen, the party, uh, the Parliament goes into recess on the 21st mm -hmm. of July, just as the Tories haven't got much time to go through <laughs> their leadership process. You haven't got much time. If he hangs on in there till the parliamentary recess, then he's there for the party conference. Well, no, we've also got the September session. But look, I mean, I would, I would just say, if Jeremy is listening, 
please, 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 Jeremy, you're the only person who can break this logjam. You, you could go out with dignity and the whole of the Labour movement mm. and the millions of people who'd love to vote for the Labour Party at a time when we've got mm. a ghastly Tory government which might do, inflict even more harm through further, anti, uh, further austerity policies way mm. into the next parliament. If you were to go now, all those people would say you've done an immensely honourable thing. The Labour Party isn't going to go back to what it was 10 years ago. Right. What do you make of Barry Gardner just talking there about a third way, about some kind of brokered arrangement, which I, I took to imply needn't necessarily include Mr. Corbyn continuing as leader? I, I didn't. It didn't sound to me as if Barry was very strongly supportive of Jeremy remaining as leader. Let me put it that way. Um, and I think part of whatever happens now must be Jeremy going. But it's a bit of a problem if Jeremy won't even see the seven people in his shadow cabinet that he appointed this week who want to talk to him about his departing with honour. Or if he won't even have a meeting with the deputy leader of the Labour Party, who incidentally also has a mandate from the members of themselves. Course. And my local members the other day, some of them of course want Jeremy to stay, whatever. But, but many of them were saying, look, this is now completely and utterly unsustainable. Mm -hmm. Jeremy must go, the party must treat him with decency so that we can move forward and, and if, take the fight to the Tories. If he doesn't go, or if there is a contest and he wins again, that the party in the country put him back in, what happens to the Labour Party? What do people like you do? Well, I mean, that would, you know, that would break the back of the Labour Party on, I would argue, the vanity um, of those surrounding Jeremy. And I think that that would be a terrible, terrible shame because there are people in my constituency who will only get a decent chance in life. And for that matter, in many of the other parts of the country um, who, after the Brexit vote last week, wanted the Labour Party to come up with a strong argument about how we could change this country for the better. And they will have nowhere to turn. If you break the back of the party, that sounds like it's at least possible that Labour would split. Look. As I've said several times, the truth is we are a parliamentary democracy. We were, we were founded as a Labour Party because, we, because the trade unions started losing um, battles through the courts. They and wanted you needed to change to put people the country. into Parliament. Exactly, to change the law. To, and to do that, you had to change the, um, the government. And that's what I still believe in. But if, if, if the leader of the Labour Party has to convince voters mm. that we've got a compelling vision for, for the future of this country. And, and Jeremy is simply unable to do that. Uh, many of Jeremy's policies I passionately support. Mm. I want us to um, change the whole language around um, public expenditure and the, pu mm. uh, and, and the public sector because as my, my, the Rhonda, many other parts of the country feel completely neglected and there are angry people there who want to vote Labour but are not convinced now. Not doing it. As things stand at the moment, even with what you could call chaos in the governing party at the moment, you would need a major miracle to win in 2020. I believe in miracles. Very well. On that existential point. And the most important miracle is that Jeremy can break the logjam. Very well. You still don't want to hit Ed Miliband though, do you? You've changed your mind on that. I, I, I don't want to hit Ed Miliband. I, I, I wish we weren't as a Labour Party where we are because I can do nothing for the Ronda. Peace has broken out on the Sunday politics. Chris May your God go with you.